Is that you get that? Yay. <laughs> oh, how do you possibly talk after your teacher? Well, that was the connection that uh, I didn't know about. Soul synchronicity, we know that. Yes, that uh, it was Joan who, and I suspect that Joan came into your life um, because you have said um, that in your life, death and life and the creativity that came out of great suffering are inextricably linked. Would you talk about that? Birth and death. Uh, you know, I didn't understand it then. And I do understand a lot more now. And I continue to go on the path to understand it even more as we all do. Each one of us is a patient. Each one of us is a loved one. We all live in birth and death. It's something none of us get away with. So my story is simple. I started when I was born. My father died at three in a car accident, and I think that paved the rest of my life. You would think the easy thing is he was a tailor and made custom-made suits. Obviously, the last thing I want to go into is fashion. My mother was in fashion, my father was in fashion, and I grew up on 7th Avenue. But it was truly the understanding of his passing that led to my birth of the person I would become today. Uh, but I did wind up on 7th Avenue, yeah. uh, designing clothes. And Ann Klein was my first boss. Now, for those of you who know, she was an amazing sportswear designer. And I was this young kid at Parsons School of Design and just wanting to sort of make it, wanting to prove myself to Ann. But the real truth was I wanted to be home and be a mom. I wanted to take care of my baby because coming from a working mother, for all of us who are working mothers, you know, the, the biggest strife we have is how do we take care of our child and really give that the love and compassion that we need. But that's not what the universe sort of saw for me. So I had to be humble about it. Anne had cancer. And in those days, nobody discussed cancer. She wouldn't even tell me. I was pregnant, nine months. Anne is having, which nobody discussed. And uh, we had a collection due birth, death, simultaneously at the same time. So I said, I'm going to stay home and be with my baby now and take care of my child because I came from a working woman and I wanted to be the mom. We have to hire another designer. And then and they said, well, you know, you've got to stay here and can't do this without you. So there I was 10 days late, gave, went into labor in the office, went to the hospital. Anna's in the hospital. We're both in a hospital and a collection's due. So I get a phone call and said, well, when are you coming back to work? I said, would you like to know whether I had a boy or a girl? <laughs> By the way, I had a girl. Anybody interested? The collection is due. In fashion, well, I said, well, I can't. I called the doctor and I asked the doctor when I can come back to work. And he said, you know, um, you know the stitches. I said, well, I can take care of that. Don't worry. Um, but I've got to get to work. I have a collection, too. <laughs> they bring the entire collection to my home out in Long Island, all the trucks, the cars, and everything, and I get a phone call and died. And I thought everybody was going to come to my house to see my daughter have bagels and locks and celebrate the birth of my new baby, Gabby, who was named after my father. But that's not how it worked out. So I had to go back to work the next day and do a collection for Ann Klein. And you were very young at the time. 25. And at that time, the minute that collection came out and you were suddenly the face of, and the designer of Anne Klein, everything began to change. And pretty soon, you found yourself as that woman who everybody thought had everything. You launched Donna Karen, you, you, know, you created this global empire of design. You met the man that became your soulmate, your partner. Everything is looking really terrific in your life. And you say, no, something's missing. What was it? Actually, the girl who's sitting here, will, there's a girl here in the audience who juiced me the first time, Pam Soroy. But 
there I was. I had just opened my own company, Don and Karen. I had birthday Anne Klein, Anne Klein too, and I now had to go on to Don and Karen. But I wanted to design clothes for me and my friends. It was really clear, a small little company just for us. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. <laughs> and then my daughter had to design clothes for my daughter, DKNY, the whole nine yards. I had everything. I had the most amazing husband that I had a crush on since I was 18 years old, the man of my dreams, artist, creative, long-haired ponytail kind of artist guy, the kind of guy I like, brilliant. He talked about this thing called connection of the dots, so over my head. Uh, but he used to put the dots on the piece of paper. He was an artist. And I had a family. It was really beautiful, but something was missing. I was a yogi since I was 18 years old. That's how I did the body suit, because I figured you put on your body clothes in the morning, you do your yoga practice, and then you go to work. So I was very selfish and designed my own wardrobe. Um, but I was looking, I was searching. And I went to the beach one day. We had this amazing house on the beach. I had a beach, I had my children, I had everything. And I looked at this rock. And it was a little rock on the beach. It had two eyes. It looked like a baked potato, a little smile and two eyes. And every week, I would come back to this rock. And I would talk to this rock. And I would say, rock, how are you so peaceful? Where, where are you finding your peace in this amazing world we live in today? And every weekend, I'd come back and talk to my rock. And I would juice and do my yoga practice and everything like that. And I was searching. And then in seven weeks, my rock disappeared. I got very upset. And I scorned the beach everywhere looking for my rock. So now I decided I'd get a boulder. <laughs> so I'd sit on the boulder and talk to my mother. My father had died. And I must say, I forgot, my mother died the day of a show. Again, birth and death. I had a collection due. I had to run to the hospital, take, say, Mom, don't go anywhere. I have a show to do. And then. And then, too, as you have this transformative meditative experience going on, Stephen gets sick, critically yeah. sick. And once again, your life shifts. And out of his illness came another transformation, his illness and eventual death. When Stephen got ill, I thought I could handle birth and death pretty quickly, but this was one I really couldn't handle. And it was not only I as a loved one couldn't handle, but in my opinion, the doctors couldn't handle, and the nurses couldn't handle. And he painted a sign for me, a, a, a plus and a minus, and he laid in bed and I would cry like a baby because my man and my dreams. And he says, listen, you can look at the glass half empty or half full, it's your choice. I'm here, why are you crying? But then um, Stephen did pass away. And in his passing, I didn't have the skills then, Joan, that I needed now, Roshi, that how do you really take care of the patient? And Stephen had this wonderful woman that both Eve and I know quite well right now. And she took care of my husband. She would walk through the hospital with these amazing essential oils. And everybody would go, what's going on? What's going on? I want that. I want that. And I realized the nurses were so busy and the doctors were so busy. And he said, whatever you do, you must take care of the nurses. And I didn't understand what he was saying at that time. And unfortunately, Steve passed. It, took, it was about a nine-year battle with cancer, lung cancer. Then my girlfriend got sick. Brilliant photographer, artist, fashion model, brain tumor, breast tumor. I mean, the full nine yards. And once again, I had to give her somebody to help her. And I had this vision years ago about where do we find the calm and the chaos, urban zen. Did Anne Klein, Anne Klein too, Donna Karen. I knew urban zen was what I really wanted to do. I needed to address people, not dress them only. Because I was taken in those dressing rooms so often and realizing what was missing on their inside. How do we get together? We're all here. How do we connect, collaborate, communicate, and create change? So Urban Zen was born. The dots were connected in Stephen's studio. OK, one more dot to connect. What is this? A broken arm. OK, first I wish you could see all my We don't have time okay, to see OK, we got a lot of those. Donna. OK, this broken arm. <laughs> but tell me about the broken arm quickly. Okay. 
I broke my arm. So I said to Pat, how do I end on the rock story? But I'd tell you my rock story. I just came back from Australia. And there I was taken to a cave, the burial ground, with all sorts of bones. And I was in a nomadic country out in the um, wilderness. What we do at, at Urban Zen is preservation of culture, healthcare, and education, kind of put it all together. So out there, I said to the elder, may I touch this bone? And I picked up the bone. And I walked out of the cave and I broke my arm. But the story continues of the connection of the dots. As I broke my arm, I met a healer, an amazing healer. I was on this nomadic project working with the Aborigine culture. And, he, and I had gone to a hospital where we were doing the Urban Zen Integrative Therapist Program. I meet this amazing healer. He says, come south with me. And he takes me south. And he says, I want to take you on a journey. And I arrive in nowhere's land. I arrive in the most extraordinary place in Australia. And a man gets into the car. His name is Steve. Long haired kind of guy, really hot. Uh, <laughs> but this does not end in a new romance. No, 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 no. He has cancer, devastatingly cancer. And he said to me, I make fragrance. I said, really? So does my husband. Oh, so did my husband. He had cancer, he made fragrance. And he said, I don't know if you're ready for this. And I said, what? And he pulled out the two bottles of fragrance that was first designed by my husband 10 years ago. And I said, he created the first content of the fragrance we did, the Donna Karen fragrance, which Steve created. So I so believe in the connection of the dots in birth and death. There is no separation. And Thank I you love for you, sharing Pat. your connections between Thank you. the dots, Donna. Thank you, Donna. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.